Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for uh, for George and for Jess to see uh, you to invite me to talk here. It's always a pleasure. Um, I only really have one thing in French to say. Is what my wife told me uh, before I talked, and that was uh, "bruiser les dents." <laughs> and, and that was about it. So that's all I got. We've gotten from um, good to bad already. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly about this one particular platform, which I think has great utility uh, in both the use of the robot uh, for the um, for its application, its harvest, and also, of course, for the microsurgery part. And I like to call this the inside-out technique. But this is a uh, one that we've heard before recently um, today and, and Jesse really briefly kind of showed you uh, the latissimus that can be done in the same fashion working from inside and then pulling it outside as opposed to going outside to get the inside. Well today we're going to talk just briefly here uh, about about the rectus um, and, and this is really kind of an interesting thing we don't raise any flaps or we're going to lower them because when you when you do this particular flap surgery you're looking up at it and Actually, the insufflation, the gravity helps you harvest the flap itself, which is kind of the opposite of what you think when you're raising flaps. You've got to fight gravity. Um, I'm not going to go and bore you with this. This is, of course, the setup. We're sitting here in the, in the corner, um, and that's how we work. And the way that we, we harvest erect is we like to take the left side if possible, which means that the, the robot has to be docked right at the umbilicus. And if the arms reach around and are actually going into uh, the patient's right side to collect the left side. And this is us just getting ready to dock the, the robot. And the way we like to look at this in plastics is, is that the robot's just yet a new tool for us to use and that it's a different way for us to perceive uh, how we look and actually how we uh, kind of uh, face a particular problem given to us and that it's also one that opens up new doors and that we should really look at this as, as uh, creating uh, new surgeries, just not old surgeries being revisited. And so with that, um, a little bit more of the background here, you know, the rectus is used for very large soft tissue defects um, and, and it really has a very large uh, donor defect to it with a very, very large incision. Um, and, and we did this really to eliminate uh, some of these uh, complications that you can get from that. Uh, and the way this whole thing went down was, was um, I kind of thought of this idea and, and called Sunnyvale, California, the robotics people. They said, yeah, come out with some cadavers. Well, lo and behold, Jesse's here, of course. And uh, he was doing his uh, latissimus. And I said, well, let's, let's kind of combine and let's kind of uh, uh, our forces here and let's, let's work together on and getting these things done. So we did a few uh, out there and it seemed to go okay. Of course, uh, one of them that we had had bilateral inguinal hernias with mesh, uh, which made things a little bit more difficult. But, but then I chose the first one to be done and it was a gal, it was a challenging gal. It was a, it was a marathon runner who had this open knee. Her uh, main issue was she had a sarcoma as a child that uh, was radiated and then went on to have um, kind of a atrophy of that lower extremity and had a difficult time getting a knee replacement because of the osteoarthritis necrosis of her cartilage, and then was ended up with a sofa wound. Um, but the advantages of, of the harvest itself are is that there's really no violation whatsoever of the anterior sheath. You can see the entire breadth of the muscle using the camera itself. It's a very short time to harvest. It only takes three arms and one doc to get this done. Uh, no retraction is really needed by another doctor. So here she is here. Here's this open wound. Uh, that she has on her knee, uh, and really we used uh, just three ports, two 11 millimeter, one 15 millimeter, and, and since then uh, we've modified this, and I'll show you the first two that we did, but, but um, uh, we don't do the incision to pull it out, we use the harvest bag for that. Um, here is uh, kind of a little more orientation, here's the feet there, the left side of the patient, there's our three docking ports right there, and that, that line just just medial to those uh, circles are the edge of the rectus muscle itself. So here's how we position things. This one monopodal cautery, a, uh, a camera, and a grasp, and it's that simple. That's all we need for this particular surgery. And that's the costal margin there on the right side, and the left side is the uh, iliac crest. And I'm going to show you just a little movie here about this. Here we are. This is a live uh, uh, 
the section here. This is rather uh, laborious, I'm sorry. It's, it does take a while, but here we are reflecting uh, some of the perineum and the anterior sheath, kind of right off the linea alba, and this just peels right off the, you know, the posterior rectus sheath here, just peels right down. And I'll just move ahead here just a bit. Here we are, the anterior rectus sheath, here are some of the uh, perforators here. I know it makes a lot of us cry to see those go, but there they go, just with cautery. Um, and, but that does raise a question in the future. Here's an inscription, and the inscriptions come down, you go on either side, and you just go right through them without violation of the interactive sheath. Uh, they're actually fairly simple, fairly easy, uh, much easier to do this way than they are uh, from the anterior approach. So here we are just flipping some of the intercostal perforators here. And here we are, look at the breadth of that. We're above the costal margin here, taking that, harvesting the muscle. So, so you get a good idea on, on, um, on how that's done. And here we are taking it out through the angled incision, which we since chained through this wide one of the other ones and pull it out through that board. And then here we are here. There is the entire breadth of the muscle. There's our three ports. Uh, there's our inset. What's, what's fascinating though is I don't think there's been any studies done like this where you look and see what uh, anatomy looks like from the outside of a muscle taken out, uh, harvested from the inside. Here she is uh, uh, just one month. Uh, here she is six months, but one would think you, she didn't have a rectus harvest because look at the intact anterior rectus sheath there. That's pretty neat and we're pretty stunned at that. You can even still see your inscriptions that are all still intact and certainly there was no hernia formation. And then people ask, well, what do you do with the post erective sheath? We just let it, i be frank with you, we just let it flap in the breeze. That was one of the technical issues Jesse and I kind of worked out. It was very, very difficult for us to kind of replace that and tie that back together again. So we just let it go. And so far, so good for the post erective sheath. But this is the harvest here. That's the left side. That's what we harvested there. Now, the next patient um, has a little bit more of a, a challenge. You'll see that in a bit here. but. Um, we've done now about 10 of these all together. Here's nine months post-op, not running too much anymore, but still doing well. The next one was, uh, I don't know how I ended up in Akron. Uh, she was a Sherpa, uh, <laughs> a leg injury, chronic osteo. Here we are setting up to get it. There's our muscle right there. Um, there's the incision. We, we changed it. We went from the angle approach down by the pedicle to central, and then finally we're playing it out through the ports now. Uh, here's post-op here. Obviously, we like to feed a lot of corn in Akron, and I think he's lost some of his Sherpa shape. Maybe that's why <laughs> he's in Akron. So, um, here he is here, and here's the leg. But, sir, you, you can hardly tell which side has been harvested here. It's very difficult for us to ascertain that post-op period. There's the venous congestion on our flap. It's still alive. And afterwards, here we are. Um, so. We've done uh, 10 of them so far, no complications, no diastasis, no hernia repairs. Um, but Jesse briefly talked, I think for this one in particular, this particular type of surgery, I think the future could be a dual plane deep because when you take a look at those perforators, they're right there. And that's somewhat uh, part of the, um, uh, the challenge that we have in deep flaps is to get right to those perforators. But here, they're right there. And to actually go through the muscle is a piece of cake because uh, you can actually get it from uh, and isolate it from the, the pedicle, which is well visualized from underneath, and then just watch them dive up. So that's one thing that we should be looking at doing in the future. And of course, uh, we talked in the advent of microsurgery, microdomal, uh, uh, intraabdominal transplants. Very easy, can't be done more simple than, than what we saw here uh, it, with, with minimal to no violation, no waves, no large incisions. Just put the organs in and anastomose on that way. So, um, that's it folks, thank you very kindly.